What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So I was going through my comments as I normally do, scrolling and combing, and I try to get to as many as I can, but one of the comments that came up the most recently was, what's my training split? So today, I'm gonna answer that question. I'm gonna go over my training split. I'll tell you what I do on all days that I train, and then I'll let you know when I rest. Now, I have used all sorts of training splits over my career and over the years. So when I was a kid, the big training split was the bro split, or at least that's what they called it. I used that split for years, and yes, it does work, and it does yield good results. When I got to college, and I went to Wake Forest University on a track scholarship, I still continued to hit the weights, but it changed for me. I got into the weight room two times a week, full body, every exercise was 12 repetitions. And if you didn't make it to 12 repetitions, the weight stayed the same for the next workout. If you made it to 12 easily, then the weight jumped up the next time you worked out. And that program worked well for me when I was in college. I wasn't able to put on muscle, which I didn't want to put on a lot of muscle as a distance runner, a miler, and a steeplechaser. So that system worked really well for me. And when I got out of college and went on my own, I went back to the original program that I used when I was a kid, and I mixed a little bit of the same type of workouts that I did in college. And that worked for me well also. As time went on in my professional career, things changed. Techniques changed. Exercises changed, splits changed, and you had to make sure that you adapted to all of this new information if you wanted to stay relevant in the field. My technique as it relates to my training split comes from 40 years of experience. It comes from my athletic career, my educational career, and my professional career. I've combined all of that experience and brought it into one program. It's the exact same program that I do. It's the exact same program that I design, the same sets, the same reps, the same exercises, exactly how I do it. And that program has been out since 2019, exactly when the pandemic hit. So I had to make even more adjustments when the pandemic hit because, of course, people weren't out and about and in gyms. They were in their house. They wanted exercises that they could do at home. Of course, pandemic ends, and then we're back into the gym and back into regular programming. So if you want more detail than I'm about to give you today, exact sets, exact reps, exact exercises, I've got my program linked in the description. Feel free to check it out, PaulSclarXFit.com. Now, before I give you the intricate details of my training split, I want to say a big thank you to Barbell Apparel for sponsoring this video. Take a look at this. This is their stealth hoodie. It's an $88 value. It's odor resistant. It's moisture wicking. It's form fitting. If you purchase $99 or more, you'll get this hoodie for free. It's sold out every single year, so act fast. I've got them linked in the description. Barbell Apparel. Okay, now the moment that you've all been waiting for. What is my training split? My training split is what I call a variable split routine. That means that it stays relatively consistent, but it also changes. Let's start with how many days a week I train and how many days that I take off. I train five days a week, Monday through Friday, and I take Saturdays and Sundays off to be with my family. Every session that I do typically lasts 75 to 90 minutes, so an hour and 15 to an hour and a half, probably closer to an hour and a half most of the time, and I optimize and make the most out of that hour and a half. So my training week starts on a Monday. What do I normally do on Monday? My typical Monday split is chest and triceps with high pulling motions. Now what's a high pulling motion? A motion like a pull up or a lat pull down or a high banded pull. My pushing exercises on Monday are focused on chest. Bench press, push-ups, dumbbell flies, cable flies. So in a nutshell, Mondays, very similar to that bro split, chest, triceps, and pulling motions. Tuesday, my second split of the week, is typically a leg day, and it's my big leg day. And by my big day, I mean it's my bigger, compound lifts. It also does involve single joint exercises as well, but typically my bigger, stronger lifts come on Tuesday. Now, Tuesday sometimes changes, and this is what I'm talking about when I talk about a variable split routine. It's not locked in every single time the same exact way. So Tuesdays, most of the time, is a leg workout followed by some light shoulder work. Now, I try to do core movements during all of my workouts, and that doesn't mean that I'm doing specific core or abdominal exercises. It just means that I engage my abdominals every single time. I do almost every single exercise. And it's one of the ways that I keep my abs looking the way they do 
all year round. So what are the bigger lifts for legs that I do on Tuesdays? Squats, Bulgarian split squats, walking lunges, goblet squats, elevated heel squats. What type of accessory work do I do? Weighted calf raises, leg extensions, seated leg curls, wall sits. If you're on my program, you know about the wall sits and you know how difficult that they are. Seems like a simple exercise when you look at it, but extremely difficult when done properly. My shoulder exercises after my leg work are typically accessory exercises like lateral raises, front raises, rear delt raises. Occasionally, there is overhead pressing done on Tuesday, but not that often. From barbell presses to single arm dumbbell presses, it varies. Wednesday, I typically like to work my back and biceps together with core movements. Like I said, I don't typically do abdominal exercises on their own. They're mixed in to my workouts. So exercises on a Wednesday, dumbbell pullovers, straight cable pulls. Occasionally, if I don't do my pressing movements for shoulders on Tuesday, I will throw them in on Wednesday. So it's not atypical to see me doing hang clean to overhead presses, barbell presses, overhead dumbbell presses, on Wednesday. I love to throw in my dumbbell biceps work, my barbell biceps work, even chin-ups on Wednesday. And of course, chin-ups, tremendous amount of biceps recruitment, tremendous amount of back recruitment. You may see me doing plank press-ups, forearm plank and reaches, all for my abdominals in between these exercises. So back exercises like seated cable rows, standing cable rows, bent over rows, pendle rows, all done typically on a Wednesday. Thursday, back to chest. And Thursday, I typically concentrate on the upper portion of my pecs. It's real difficult as you get older to maintain the upper pecs. It just seems that they wanna just slouch down and go away. So Thursday, I spend a fair amount of time working on the upper portion of my pecs. And that's with exercises like incline dumbbell press, incline barbell press, incline flies, cable flies, push-ups, calisthenics, similar to Monday, but just different type exercises. So you may see me doing a push-up to barrel rotation on a Thursday. You may see me do that on a Monday. I mix these exercises up, and again, that's all part of the variable split routine that I do. Thursday is also a day I typically like to do some closer grip presses. That means that you may see me doing a close grip bench press. I may do close grip push-ups with side plank punches. But again, the primary focus is on my upper chest. I save my triceps then for Friday. And Friday is another leg day. So it's the second leg day of my week. Now Friday's leg work typically starts with deadlifting. And what is the deadlift work? It works the entire posterior range of your body. That's from the traps all the way down to the heels. So I typically start my Friday workout with deadlifts. It's the one deadlift day that I typically do per week. I used to do more, but as I've gotten older, I have certainly had to cut that down. It's just extra wear and tear in my body. And since I've cut it down to one day a week, I've seen tremendous improvement in my strength and in my endurance. The rest of Friday's leg work can involve leaping and bounding, plyometric work, body weight Bulgarian split squats, body weight lunge walks. It could also involve reverse lunges. I sometimes will do them on Tuesday with my bigger leg workout, and I'll sometimes do them on Friday with my slightly lighter leg workout. Now with the deadlift, I like to pair that with seated leg curls. So you'll see me doing leg curls on a Friday. Sometimes I'll do my leg curls before my deadlifts. Sometimes I'll do them after. If I do them before, it's to pre-exhaust and get my hamstrings activated so that when I go over to the deadlift, I can feel them immediately. I will occasionally add some lighter leg extensions and some more volume in on Friday. So Friday is my day to get it all done before the weekend, to get myself pumped up, ready to go, burn some calories, build some muscle, stay shredded for the weekend, stay shredded year round. So I'll even add in battle rope exercises on Friday, some conditioning exercises, kettlebell burpee deadlifts, mobility exercises, abdominal exercises. And I like to touch on a lot of the muscles that I've worked during the week that could use a little bit of fine tuning. So I may add in front shoulder raises, lateral raises. I'll add in biceps curls. I won't go as heavy as I did the first day of the week. I'll add in triceps exercises. So I'll get a great pump before the weekend and I'll be ready to go. Now what do I do on the weekends? 
I don't just lay around. Like I said, weekends are time for me to spend time with the kids and my family. So if they're active, I'm active. If I'm outside, they're outside. So I like to spend a lot of time outside if the weather is good and make sure that I'm active and moving. The worst thing that you can do on your off days is just sit around and do nothing. That could be anything from riding a bike to shooting hoops to kicking a soccer ball around to throwing a baseball around. Just stay active during your rest days. Now, as part of a variable split routine, if I wanna get a little bit extra in, I'll program that in. If I feel that it's a little bit too much that week, I'll take it out. So for me, one of the big things that I learned in my athletic career was that when I went to practice, if there was a specific workout programmed, I had to do that workout that day, regardless of how I felt. So if I was sore and beat up, I still had to perform that workout. So one of the things that I changed when I went out on my own after college, when I didn't have a team anymore, is I wasn't so rigid with my workouts. So if I had something planned on a specific day and I intuitively knew this is not gonna work today, I changed the program up. I may have put it off a day or two days. I still did it, but I didn't have to do it on that specific day. So if I needed a rest day in college and it called for a gigantic workout, I couldn't take it. If I needed a rest day in high school and it called for a big workout, I couldn't take it. But now on my own, if I need that rest, I will take it. If I need to back off on some of the volume of my workouts or the intensity, I can do that now. And I think it's a really, really good tool to use when you are programming your workouts. You have to be intuitive and in touch with your body. There's gotta be that mind-body connection, and I talk about it a lot. You have to have that mind-body connection. Are you really tired, or are you really not? Do you feel lazy, you don't wanna get up and go? You have to decide what it is that's stopping you there. And that, my friends, is how progress is made. Tune in next week. See you then.